Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting Duckman Cycles production. Remember this shortcut band-aid extendable push rod excuse that I put on this engine? Yeah, what a load of horse shit. I can't believe I allowed myself to do that. Anyway, it sat fine with that side of the engine down for a few weeks before it started to leak. Or at least I think that's what it was. Nonetheless, there was a leak on the floor, and if that was it, well, I imagine heat cycles and oil pressure would have accelerated that leak anyway when it's finally running. The only thing that I feared of pulling off the head for a new push rod tube was opening that proverbial can of worms. And as you'll see in this video, that's exactly what I did. Yay! More things to fix, right? Anyway, nonetheless, this time I'm gonna do it properly. Welcome back everybody to my noisy neighborhood. Today we're going to um, pull the heads off of this, well at least the one head anyway, the one with that push rod too because I'm not happy with it. It just to me feels dirty. So we're going to get that uh, tube out of there and replace it with a, well that was really stuck on there good, that grease worked good, and replace it with a proper Volkswagen OEM part. So it's not to deal with any of the potential leaking stuff because while this thing was sitting upside down, yeah, it actually did drip just a little bit. Nonetheless, we're going to fix this thing today and put a proper push rod tube on there and also measure our displacement at the same time. Exhaust off. Well, that was impressive. <laughs> you guys didn't see what I saw, but that nut flew off and went straight up in the air into the garage where it catapulted itself. Thankfully, Eleanor is in a bubble, although it didn't touch the bubble, it landed right down in front of it. Hey, there's Boomer. Boomer's behind me, stalking me, because that's what he's good for. One of them stalky ducks. Pull the whole exhaust off and it'll go flying and we can all laugh about it. Alright. Alright, all the washers will come off now. tipped up a little bit. Some got down in the exhaust manifold. Boomer. He came over here just to harass me. He left his swimming pool just to bother me. Go away, Boomer. Go. <laughs> I love him, but man, he can be a pain in the ass sometimes. This is one of these places that people tell me all the time, put a swivel on it. Well, that's not going to work. Look at that. And that, boom, at the other angle, forget it, it's even worse. So anyway, for that reason we have a 13 millimeter wrench. And no, a ratcheting wrench isn't going to fit in there either. It's too damn close. And if you have a fancy ratcheting wrench that does fit, that's that skinny, it's probably too expensive for me, which is why I don't have one. Gas gets off. Hey, where is the exhaust gasket? Oh, it's attached to the pipe. We're good. Alright, take our rockers off. Remember the last time we didn't even set the valves? All the assembly should lift. That's it. Push rod to push rods rather out. All right, now we're ready to start pulling the head. I'm gonna get something from my hands first. So I noticed years ago that if you keep wiping your hands as you work, they don't get so damn dirty. But the rags do. And 
need us a 15 millimeter. You know, I was just trying to get push rod swapped out to save myself some time. Like we ended up getting the rods out. Or studs, I should say. That happens. Even though I soaked them both in pea blaster first, the matter just still came out. Alright. All of our nuts are off. Make a nut count. Make sure we got them all. I didn't lose any. Nope, we got all eight. Good. And this head's ready to come off. Put this drip pan down here underneath. Ooh, this one's gonna lift off pretty easy. Good. Gonna take the cylinders with it? Nope. Alright. This is where we'll find out if the that's what I was waiting for. Got the oil out of the head. The washer's too well ready. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a little oil in the cylinder, but that's from standing it upright. Be careful when I turn it for the flywheel. That's how I ripped my pinky off when I was a kid. Yeah, minimal scuff marks in there. I mean, geez, you know what? Now that I've wiped it away, what was there was just a uh, oil run. A little bit of oil in the cylinders from standing the engine up as I did test for those leaks, which is to be expected. The stuff will leach around the rings. All right, I guess we're gonna get the calipers out and let's see what our bore and our stroke is on here. Just looking at this, it looks pretty factory to me, or at least 1600. Okay, factories. well, we're back. Got my trusty calipers here, the ones that I always manage to lose the battery cover on. It's like I have six of these in all different sizes, and every single one of them always loses the battery cover. Obnoxious, completely obnoxious, but with a piece of tape I can get them working again. <laughs> all right, let's see what our bore is. Now I'm seeing 85 and a half. Yep, oops, shit. Yeah, that's it. 85 and a half. It says 85 and a quarter, but I bumped it. Anyway, 85 and a half. I'm gonna speculate that there's no reason anybody would turn this into a stroker if it's only 85 and a half. But let's go ahead and make sure this cylinder is at bottom dead center. Yep. Go ahead and stick our feeler gauge down in there. All right, and it says 70 and a half millimeter. Now what we'll do is we'll turn it all the way up to the top. And I don't think you could get a stroker out of this anyway with that much to the piston unless you really had some weirdly machined heads. <laughs> Alright, here we go. And now what do we got? 1.93. Probably a little margin of error on there, but 69 millimeters. So this is a 1600 engine. That's what we wanted to know. Now we've effectively figured that out. Now I just got to get the push rod seals ready to go on here and put this head back on. Not too much to this. I don't know why I bitched out. There's the piece of cooling tin that a couple people called me out on and said it wasn't installed properly or that it wasn't there at all. There it is, you guys. <laughs> all right, let's get ready to throw our head back on. Right, let's start putting this thing back together. You can see Boomer at my foot over here, acting like a dick, always when I'm trying to work. <laughs> Got our head with two of these tubes are still glued to it. The way I see is if they're not leaking and they're still glued, I'm just gonna leave them. I did stretch them out a little bit. Go on here. There we go. I usually stretch them just by eye. I don't do anything too ridiculous on these things. <sighs> Got one tube going back on this side. Come hey on. Been a while since I've done this. You can tell them all uncoordinated. 
This is our new push rod tube. Make sure everything gets set in the holes it's supposed to be in. That looks about right. Boomer! You are a damn disaster. Would you go away, please? Okay, we're good. We're ready to start putting our bolts back on here. Every one of these gets a washer. Now I'm going to have to start by just snugging them up to pull the head down in position to seal up the push rod tube. So we're not actually torquing this yet. So yes, I am going to use an impact. So for those of you that are whining, turn your head. I don't want to hear you say nothing in the comments about it. <laughs> The only thing I'm doing is moving the head. We're not actually putting any torque down on these things. Alright. Hey. Particularly where I put the new push rod tube on. That one was just a little bit longer. Not much, probably like. I'd give it maybe a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, somewhere between those two. Alright, here we go. As I said, we're not parking this down, we're just moving that head. That's it. That one didn't even touch the washer yet. There it is. better. I can see everything is seating up now. Yep, our tubes are starting to get snug. That one still feels a little sloppy to me though. As far as I can go, yeah, as I, I was saying, I have a cheat home. sheet for that. So these are the bolt patterns in which you're going to tighten them down at. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, fives up here, five, six, seven, and eight, and that's all the seven foot pounds. I've got my torque wrench calibrated into seven. I put it in the vise and tighten it up with a scale on the end of it to make sure that I actually got seven foot pounds because, as I said, this tool likes to not be calibrated properly after sitting a while. Come on, give me my seven. Seven. Okay, and then right here, this is actually going to be silly because now everything has moved. I'll just spin that ratchet all damn day long. Number two, right here. Come on. Not flicking. There it is. Just for old time's sake. Yep, there it is. Number three. Okay, good. Four. This down here. Five. Yep. Six. Yep. Seven. Eight. There 
inches. Now I'll recalibrate the tool to 18 foot-pounds and we'll be back to tighten this thing up. All right, we're calibrated to 18 and now we're gonna take a crisscross pattern for number one, now somewhat crisscross pattern. Number one is right here, 18 foot-pounds, here we go. There it is. Yep, that's it. Somewhat crisscross, as I said. We're actually number two is over here. I don't make the rules up on this stuff, guys. This stuff is from the manual. If you don't like it, take your concerns elsewhere. Do you think 18 foot pounds isn't tight enough for a Volkswagen engine because you're used to tighten your Chevy down to 80 foot pounds? Then maybe you should break out a manual to a Volkswagen. Start working on this stuff yourself because your Ford Chevy Mopar stuff doesn't apply here. Good mosquitoes. Funny how I always start this job out torquing down a head more gently. Towards the end, I get a little more rough. <laughs> now, what I always like to do is go back to the first bolt and just make sure we're still on 18. Yep. And I just go through the entire battery of them again in the same order. Sometimes. The first few bolts you tighten down will actually go loose when you torque down the rest of them. Alright, good. Now we're ready to put our rockers back on. Here they are. Rockers go in just like so. Make sure all these little Push rods go in the little cups under the rockers. Excellent. A set of washers for them. There's one of them. Put everything up here so it was easy to find. And guess what? You guess it's not easy to find. You're right. <laughs> the other washer here. Oh, there it is. I knew it was there. I knew it was there. Alright. I don't remember what the torque spec is on these. I should look it up. Oh, the joys of internet. It's so great having that. Because you can actually just pull out your little phone or other device or sit down in front of your computer and just type in Volkswagen or just VW. Rocker, torque, spec. And even if you spell it wrong, it still finds it. Connecting rod nuts, crankcase nuts, no. Torque nuts, clutch nuts, no. Everything except for what we need here, of course, right? <clears throat> Rocker shaft nuts. It says 14 to 18 foot pounds. Is that right? I thought there were a lot less than that. All right, well, we're already set to 18. So, we're going 18 then. Oops, I gotta change out. Eighteen, eighteen. All right, 18 again. Good, we're set. Fantastic. All right, now I just have to do a valve adjustment job. You guys have seen me do that in a video before. I'm not even gonna bother covering that right now. Once I've got those set, we can smack this rocker cover back on. Then I'm gonna tip the engine up the other way and see if she leaks. Okay, we got our valves adjusted. Put our cover back on. Hopefully it's still got enough grease on. It probably does. And that's it. Stand it up. And we'll let them set the oil on that side. 
see if we get any leaking out of our push rod tubes. I'm pretty confident things are good. But that's usually not a good sign because usually that means I'm going to find something wrong. <laughs> Just like my brake line when I said, well, I've never had one of these leak before. And guess what? As soon as I said it on video, the very first one that ever leaked on me. Yeah, joy. Yay. Nope, so far so good. I probably should degrease everything on the outside, but we're not going to do that until daylight. So I'm going to let this thing sit overnight with an oil pan underneath it and just see if anything starts coming out of anywhere. Might come out of my exhaust ports, as a little bit did turn up in the header. It's just going to make a smoky mess when we finally do get this thing started up again. And it's all oil in there. <laughs> I'll live. <laughs> and I think the engine will be just fine. A little oil in the exhaust never hurt anybody unless you have a catalytic, right? <laughs> well, it leaked. Not only did it leak, but it fucking leaked. Started out as a small weep after about an hour, and then all of a sudden, all of the push rod tubes, every single one of them, every single end of them, even the new one with the brand new seals, leaked. Remember I said I was opening up that can of worms by pulling off this head? Well, that's exactly what it was. So I ordered up some new push rod tubes, and I got them painted up as soon as they arrived. Then we got ready to start putting it all together. But what we're getting back into is Eleanor's engine here. This is a 1600 dual port that I've been working on. If you remember correctly, we had problems with the push rod tubes. I got freshly painted up push rod tubes here ready to go. So I'm gonna try to put this engine together, and if I get lucky, it may even be running later in this video. I guess we'll just have to see. But Eleanor is not coming out of her bubble today, not at all. We got 25 mile an hour winds out here, pine needles are being blown around everywhere, sticks are falling, pine cones are falling, and there's a spray of tree sap everywhere. So we're just gonna leave her safe in the bubble. Even the babies are outside today enjoying the nice weather. Ice box over here, and there's Frosty. Look at you two. Ah, oh, you're such good babies, and you're getting so big. I mean, look at them in my hand here. Look at that. That's how big they are anymore. They're quarter-scale chickens. <laughs> they still got a bit of growing left to do, but they'll get there. And little Cheeky is inside. I'm afraid to bring Cheeky out because I don't have a safe cage to put her in. And you guys shit all on the bottom of your cage real bad there. We're going to have to clean that thing out today, uh-huh. Look, it's plastered in there. You guys did that in about two days worth of time. It doesn't take long. Good news is it doesn't stink yet because they're still babies. All right, let's see where we left off here. I believe we had problems with these push rod tubes under here, particularly on the right-hand side of the engine. When I reassembled it, they were just brittle, being that they are rusted, and they started to dent and just crease. And, yeah, they were just incredibly brittle. The new ones I'm noticing aren't like that. I'm squeezing them and I'm not denting them. These things are so soft, it's incredible. And of course, if you put any kind of dent or crease in these things, being that they're rusty crusty, they just kind of crack. And it seems to be only the right side that's affected. The left side ones, they don't nearly have as much rust. Go figure. So I'm probably gonna leave this side unaffected. I'm just not gonna mess with it. Again, opening up that can of worms. This side is fine. If we end up with a problem in the future, we'll address it. But for now, right side yeah, only. Okay, here we go. Pop this off. I always pull this the wrong way. Let go. Here we go. All right. Pull off our rockers. Shame I had all this nicely torqued down and everything still leaks. In fact, it leaks worse than it did before when I started with just one little pinhole in a push rod tube is what I started out with with the problem. And some of my friends said, why don't you just clean it and just put a piece of JB Weld on it. I'm like, damn it, that actually would have been easier than messing with this at all. But anyway, we're finding bigger problems with stuff rotting out, so we're just going to start fixing stuff. All right, we got all our push rods in here. We're going to leave them be just for the moment. We're going to start loosening up head bolts. That's all of them. Yeah, okay, good. Nuts. Nuts everywhere. Nuts. This one, the whole stud wants to come out, so we're just gonna let it do what it wants to do. We got one more nut over here. I'm gonna pick that up before it falls down a push rod tube. Don't want that to happen. All right. 
This is coming back out of here. Let's see how many of the tubes stayed attached to the head. None of them this time. Well, now we got one, go figure. There we go. All right. I can take these off of here. Yeah, as I was saying, these are just incredibly brittle. I mean, <laughs> the new ones don't do that at all. Yeah, these things are all crinkled and banged up, and this one's actually a little better than the other one was. But yeah, they're just incredibly soft. Yep, that one's crusted. and see all the crust fell off of it? It's actually rusted, or about to rust through. All right, anyway, we're not dealing with that shit anymore. Get that out of here. We've got all brand new push rod tubes, beautifully painted, that are ready to go on here. If you're watching my other YouTube channel, I actually demonstrated how I painted these, and I'm gonna say that there's probably no easier or better way to do it. So if you've got a leaf rake around, if you're anywhere in the northern hemisphere you probably do but yeah they painted up real nice I can still see the seam on them the seam is gonna face up and I got all brand new gogies to put on the ends of them so I'm gonna grease them up wow they do fit nice and tight they're actually stretching over everything the other ones just kind of slipped on so yeah these are good and from my understanding these are also German made I can't say the same for the tubes. Who the hell knows where they came from, but yeah, I was told that these are actually German made that were in that kit, so whatever it's worth, maybe we'll get some better quality components here, and maybe we'll be less likely to leak everywhere. All right, I got one of the old gogies is still down here. Now I'm gonna pull all these out, and I'm gonna clean up the flanges on this side down in here, just from any debris. But look at that, that one's actually split could be part of the reason why we were leaking because this is all dried out okay all right these are the flanges I was telling you that I'm gonna clean them out if there's any dirt or debris or even a piece of an old seal that decides it wants to sit there that would stop the little rubber gogies from sealing properly against the block Yeah, she looked pretty good because I did clean them the last time. All right, we're good in that department. Yeah, I checked the manual on these, and they tell you to use a little motor oil to uh, lube these little gogies up before you put them on. I like grease just because it leaves like a, a waxy um, layer behind, and that waxy layer can sometimes give you a better seal. And that's especially true when it comes to the cork gaskets on the valve covers but these just need to be lubed up enough so that way once you set them in place it looks like there's a little bit of dirt in there what the hell happened we're just gonna wipe that off and start over again you I don't know where I picked up the dirt from but that's no good There we go. All right, now they're ready to go in. I just simply dropped them into place. And I've been having much better luck putting the rods in to hold them in place before I slap the head on, because otherwise these damn things just go everywhere. All right, now that we got them in, we're gonna orient the seams so that way they're facing up. I don't think that makes a huge difference because technically they're not supposed to leak anyway, right? But these things will be under some kind of pressure. These sticks are just flying everywhere. This is exactly why Eleanor's not outside. Yeah. All right, now the head is ready to go back on. This part can be a little tricky. I'm gonna step the camera back just a little bit so you guys can get a better look at what I'm talking about. First, you gotta get the studs lined up. This can be very finicky. 
And then you gotta get your push rod tubes lined up. With these rods in here, it's so much easier to guide everything into place. Some people do it without it. Me, after having done this just a couple times <laughs> over the last few days, I'll admit it's just been easier for me to handle it this way. Alright, why is that head not going down all the way there? What are we propped up on? Something's holding us up here. No, I think we're alright. Yep, that's all it. Right. Everybody ready to start putting yes, the head bolts we'll back on. Yes, sir. Oh, no fighting, chickens. You'd be good, chickens. I hate it when the whole stud pulls out like this. Good news is, it screws into a case saver, so it's not actually chewing up the case every time this thing comes in and out. So I'm not too worried about it. I could probably Loctite it, but I don't want to Loctite it, because if there's any possibility that it rusts itself to the case saver, then the whole case saver is going to come out. So we're just going to leave it alone. Don't mess with what ain't broken, right guys? Then I wouldn't have been in this position anyway, having to tear this whole thing all apart and put it back together again twice. Yeah, boy. That's life for you. You mess with something, and then you end up sorry. <laughs> All right. We're in a position now where we're going to start snugging up these nuts, and we're just going to turn them until they stop. Now that's as tight as we want to go, and the whole while we're going to be watching the push rod tubes to make sure that they all go in straight. So as this thing tightens the head down, it's going to compress them just a little bit. I forget how much springy something is on it. There's a number for it. I, I usually just do it by feel. You know, if it looks like it's going in right, and I go with it. Making sure everything is straight. Making sure all of our push rod seams are facing up, and they appear to be. Okay. Let's turn these bolts just until they stop. Uh oh, that nut wasn't even threaded on right. Yo, all the push rods are looking nice and straight. Gotta have straight tubes, man. At this point, we're not torquing anything. Get these things moved. Alright. That one, the intake on cylinder number two, don't look quite straight. Now's a chance to straighten it. All right, that's good. All right, here we go. All we're doing is just getting the head snug down and making sure those tubes are lined up. This is where I always run into problems. I'm going to have a problem because one of the tubes didn't tighten down straight. I think we're good. Now I can break out the torque wrench and start torquing it down in the torque pattern. Right now everything would just be finger snug as they'd say. And that's what the push rod tubes look like. You can see how they all look like they're on a goofy angle? That's normal because the they don't line up directly with the case. 
and they're pushed off a little bit to one side. Same down here on the bottom. See? They're all off to one side. But anyway, the rubber gogies are, should seal up. Shouldn't be a problem. They're nice and fluffy, unlike the ones that came over here that were cracked and brittle. And then some, you know, they didn't crack until I took them apart and put them back together again, which is why we leaked. All right, remember we hey. had a cheat sheet. This is, the, this is the order in which we need to tighten down these bolts, the seven foot pounds on the first go around, starting with number one, which is right here. I calibrated this tool with a scale. I actually shoved it in my vise. Yeah, looks like we had quite a ways to go yet before they were actually properly finger tight. That's good. Make sure all them push rod tubes are tightening straight. They appear to be. This is number two. Come in. There it is. Double check. Yep. Number three. That's it. Number four. Man, the sticks are just falling on everything, just like I said. That's why Eleanor's not outside. Six. Seven. Somebody told me. Duck man, you know, you screw up when you use that torque wrench because once you click it, you keep pulling. I'm not keep pulling, I'm just making sure that it is indeed not giving us a false reading. Alright, now we're ready for our next torque set, which is this. And we have these smaller studs on here, so we're going to go to 18 foot-pounds. So I'm going to recalibrate that wrench using the scale method, and then we have a different torque pattern. Alright, we got us a different torque pattern. And yes, the numbers face me, so they're going to be upside down for you, but I guess I can always flip that over. <laughs> anyway, number one. Oops, this one. Number one is still the same as number one on this side. That's interesting. Calibrated to 18 foot-pounds. Here we go. There it is. 18, number two. Get a little close to that tripod there. Three. I never bother to try to remember these. This is why I keep a cheat sheet here. If I did this stuff every day, I'd have it remembered, but is that 18? No falls reading, this is why we're rechecking. There it is, 18. Over here, number five. Number six. Last one. Good. And our rockers go back on. Everything is nice and clean, still is. We gotta get all of our. Wow, that is a hell of a gust. There goes my papers! Bye, papers! Nice knowing you. Scared the crap out of the chickens, too. Gotta make sure all of the push rods are in the little cups back side of this thing. Put our little washers on. Ooh, that's the wrong washer. What is that too? That's a super thin washer. Huh. Okay. It's on my tray, but it doesn't belong there. That's the correct washer. Now we have two 13 millimeter bolts. Originally when I did the valve job on this about three years ago, you guys might remember that. These nuts were half inch nuts. 12 was too small, 13 was too big, they were half inch nuts. I've since replaced them with proper 13s, but somebody either used some nuts that, that just were not improperly shaped or something, or somebody re-threaded them to make them work. 
but I've since gotten rid of them so now it's a proper 13 because it pissed me off to have to go into the other toolbox drawer to get a half inch wrench out to adjust this stupid thing. Alright. Where is my 13? Oh, I don't see it. Oh no! Oh, there it is. Alright. The max torque rating on the rockers is also 18. Get that one snugged up a little bit. Come back to this side and torque this one down. I believe the torque spec on this is like 15 to 18. But since we're already set to 18, just go 18 and I'll have to recalibrate the wrench that way. There it is. All right, now I just gotta go over and check my valves. To make sure everything is still adjusted properly. Chances are, since I've moved things around, there's a great possibility that you know everything's not as perfect as it was earlier. All right, well we're gonna check those. Um, you know what? Before Jesus, the dirt and the wind is just blowing dirt in everything. Damn it, man! Oh, I can't wait to have a shop. <laughs> just dirt and everything is blowing everywhere over here. This place is just a freaking mess. Before we even do the valve job on this, because chances are something's going to be screwed up and I'm going to find myself doing it over again, let's just go ahead and reseal up this bale. Stand the engine on end and make sure we don't have any leaks. No sense in doing a valve job. I'm just gonna have to take it apart again, right, guys? There it is. All right. Now let's stand the engine back up. I'm gonna have to move the camera because it's about to hit that tripod. All right, we are nice and upside down. It looks like we're nice and dry. I don't see any leaks or rundowns or anything. That's a mess. Heads are a little greasy from before, but those are from the leaks previous. I'm actually going to degrease this entire area and clean it all up. That's what I did over here, and this stuff is still all nice and dry, even though we've been standing this engine vertically for a while. The only reason this is wet right here is some of the drippages that were coming off of everything going that way. I'm also going to need to check the uh, valve cover gasket on that one. It looks like it might be leaking, but this one definitely is. You can see there's a little drip coming off of it. There it is, going into the kitty litter I put here on the ground. So. Those are easy to fix though. I'll pull it back off, reseat the gasket, probably uh, re-grease it, because yes, they do need axle grease. But I've taken this thing on again and off again so many times, that's the reason why it's probably leaking. It's just, it's not happy anymore. But we're good in this department. I'm uh, convinced this is gonna be fine. As I said, I'm not tearing this side apart unless we have another problem, because I don't feel like opening up that can of worms. But these tubes are solid. That's something I can't say about the other ones. This is the old tube. Hey, look at that. I'm able to just crush it in my hand. Now, these things were getting just brittle. They were getting worn. The uh, rust had compromised them and made them a little thin. I don't know, where this car was sitting, it was outdoors. Maybe it was getting a little bit of spray up from the ground. I don't remember this engine ever having any sleds on it or anything. So there's no protection essentially from the earth underneath. All right, well, I'm happy. I'm going to let that sit just a little while longer as is, and we're going to come back with some degreaser, and then we'll check it again after that when she's dry and clean. See all them sticks on the ground? I've been picking them up the whole while I've been working, and they just keep falling on the ground. So, of course, if Ellen over here, she'd be getting belted with this stuff. And then I feel like getting ding marks in my beautiful paint job. Yeah. Brr. All right, started to put the header back on, and then I figured, you know, I better stop right here and just, uh, See if I've got all the tins and parts that I need to assemble this thing, because it's been a while. I think it's been almost three years since I tried to play anything injury related. So I'm going to dig through my stuff, see what I've got, and uh, just start assembling some things. So, well, let's see what happens. And we'll get to that in the next video, because this one has already run long enough. So licky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.